Joining up with the Marine Research Foundation team, led by Dr. Nicholas Pilcher, has been a real trial by fire. Diving off of speeding boats and chasing after swimming sea turtles is not for the faint of heart. I wonder what they have in store for me next. I received a phone call from Dr. Nick last night to meet him at his house. He's invited me on another adventure. Hello, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hi. How are you? Good, good, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. You ready for a long road trip? Yes. Alrighty, shall we? Let's get this uh, here. Out. All right, here, give me a hand with this. Oh, what's this? So this, this is a turtle excluder device. This is what we're gonna put on the trawlers in Samarkand. Oh. Sea turtles are most vulnerable from the commercial shrimp fishing industry, which relies on bottom trawling equipment. Normally, when a turtle gets caught by a trawl net without a TED, it is unable to return to the surface. And since sea turtles are air-breathing creatures with lungs, if they remain trapped in the net, they are quickly drowned. A turtle excluder device, or TED, as they are known, is a simple and effective specialized device that allows trapped sea turtles to escape when caught in a trawler's net. It's a six to seven hour drive from Kota Kinabalu to Sandakan, up to and past Mount Kinabalu. There's Mount Kinabalu. Isn't it beautiful? Then, through the farming market town of Kundasang, Ranao, and Tulupid, before the last downhill stretch to Sabah's east coast. Hey, Alex, wake up. So we're arriving at Kampung Batu Puteh. Oh, so <laughs> Alright! Yeah, so we're going to install the TDs to one of the troll boats in this Kampung. Okay. okay After go. my catnap, I feel much better. <laughs> Fishing is the mainstay for all of Sabah's coastal communities, which obviously has a massive impact upon the marine environment and the marine creatures that live there. Liana currently leads the MRF TED project and can't wait to introduce me to some important local supporters of her work. Assalamu alaikum. Hi, Ka. Kaka ini ka sampai ah ini Alex. Ka sampai ya. Nick. <laughs> Alex, this is Kasabaria. So she is the owner of the troll boat that we're oh. going to put the TED in. And she's been working with us uh, with the TED program since like more than 10 years. Wow. Yeah, and then her husband is right there. So oh, he'll hi. be helping us with um, installing the TED onto the boat. Uh, nama saya Sabaria Abdul Rasid. Uh, tinggal di Kampung Batu Putih selama 17 tahun. Kami punya pencarian cuma di laut saja. Pendapatan kami cuma ikan dengan udang. Dulu-dulu kami ter selalu tertangkap penyu, tapi sekarang kami mem memakai yang TD tidak pernah sudah tertangkap penyu. So what's so special about this TD? So over the years we've had some modifications to the TD. So this is a new design that we want to test out. So we have to sew this TD to the troll boot. Okay. Here's an interesting fact. The U.S. National Research Council determined that shrimp trawling was possibly the largest source of human impact mortality of sea turtles within our oceans. Turtle excluder devices, or TEDs as they are known, have been proven to reduce sea turtle bycatch in trawl nets by 97%. The Malaysia Smiley TED design, tested in the U.S. by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, managed to exclude all turtles in under two minutes from entry to the trawl net. Currently, Malaysia is the only country in Southeast Asia using TEDs to save endangered sea turtles. 
Next, it's straight to work on sewing in the new TED with Liana and the captain's help. My name is Liana Izin Khalid. I'm from Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. I've been working with uh, the Marine Research Foundation for over four years now. I've been helping Nick with all the conservation work that we do with MRF. My main role is the project coordinator for the Tata Scudia device project in Malaysia. So this is a project that MRF has taken for over 10 years now. And I maintain all the uh, communications with the fishermen, with the Department of Fisheries, and all the activities and the implementation of this project. It's early morning as we set out and it takes over an hour to get to the trawling site some 12 kilometers out from Batu Puti and Sabah's east coast. Liana and I follow in the trawler with the TED sewn into the net and Dr. Nick follows the partner trawler without a TED as we look to carry out a comparative study between the two trawlers and compare how the presence of the TED could possibly affect the day's catch. However, the weather and sea conditions look ominous. So we call this the TED camp. We designed this whole thing. So is this a breadboard, a camera, a power bank, and then a tube, um, say it's a waterproof tube. So we'll put this behind the TV later so that um, whatever that they catch, like the fishes that goes in and then the catches that goes in, and we can show the fishermen like how this TV works. It also helps us with the design. So this is a new design, so we want to know how it works underwater. So if there's anything to modify or to change, we can know immediately and then we will just test it out again. Unfortunately, the weather and sea conditions don't seem to be improving and it's not long until I start to feel a little seasick. Now that we have both nets from both trawlers in the water, we can start the comparative survey to gauge how well the TED works. Whilst the trawlers go about their fishing, Liana informs me of the challenges that she faces during her research work. Liana tells me that in an ideal world, there would be a compulsory nationwide TED program here in Malaysia. But at the present time, only four states in Malaysia are deploying TEDs. Kelantan, Terengganu, Johor, and Pahang, with the states of Perak and East Johor, now showing interest in making TEDs mandatory. That's why Liana's work is so vital to prove to the fisheries departments, as well as fishermen, that TEDs are a win-win for both sea turtles and the fishermen. Time is up for both trawlers, and Liana checks her TED camera is still working after it has been recording how the TED performed. I really can't wait to see the footage, but we'll have to wait until we get back to shore. Right, it worked. The camera worked. Still oh. recording. Nice. So, we get to see some footages. I can't wait to see what we got. Yeah. <laughs> we are happy to hear that there have been no turtles caught in either trawl net but I see firsthand the issue of bycatch, comprised of all other untargeted marine species, which are wastefully caught by the trawl nets as the fishermen try to catch their prized target species of shrimps. Liana tells me small sharks and other non-target bycatch species are often caught in these trawl nets. And luckily for this little guy, we quickly release him alive back to the sea. It's then down to the smelly and rocky business of sorting out the catch so we can compare each of the trawler's catches later back on shore. None of this is improving my seasickness though. Nearly five hours from when we first set out this morning, we finally return to Batu Puti and unload the morning's catch from both trawlers. 
So what's going on now? What do I do with these? Right, so this we will put the labels on the ones with TED and without TED. Mm -hmm. So this would be the without TED, tanpa mm -hmm. TED. So you just like, put here so that we can so make the comparison. Yeah, out. just yeah. put it in and then uh, just get the ones with the without. The one with. And then we will weigh shrimps, uh, fish and trash fish. So it's clear with this that with TED, there's more quality prawns mm -hmm. and less trash fish. Yes, this is what we found and most importantly, there's no dead turtles. Yes. Auntie Sabaria is keen to show me how she cleans, cooks and dries the shrimps from today's catch and I am quickly set to work. Right, moment of truth. Let's look at the camera files from today's draw. Mm -hmm. So, you can see that the TD mm -hmm. is um, perfectly on top of the net. And from our, obviously you don't see it from here, but from our previous studies, we get like coconuts escaping from the uh, escape flap. Uh, mm -hmm. We have wood, so it won't crush the catches from the, at the caught end of the trawl. Mm. You can see that the tires just comes out from the escape flap. So it really just pushes it out. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is genius. Mm -hmm. Can I see something cool? Yeah. Is that a green turtle? Yes, it is. This is amazing. I know, right? So these turtle excluder devices do work. They do save turtles. And not only that, they actually provide fishermen with quality catch. Yeah, and uh, we wanted to prove to the Department of Fisheries and um, Fishers that TD does work and it does save turtles and not impacting the uh, income of fishes. Well, it just goes to show that if you give an environmental issue a lot of thought, you can actually come up with simple and cheap solutions, such as the TED. Well, it's been a long couple of days, starting with my pan-Borneo road trip, our morning out at sea, and time as a fisherwoman. But it's been a fruitful one, not only for the fishermen who have returned with some great quality seafood, but for Liana also, as she has clearly proven that her TED designs really work to help improve the quality of the fishermen's catch and save turtles' lives. This is a win-win for all concerned, but most importantly, for the sea turtles. Join me next week for more adventures when I visit Sabah's Turtle Islands Park, here on Borneo Ocean Diaries. <laughs>